What's up everybody, this is Matthew Modis and today we're going to be reviewing Android 5.0 Lollipop, Google's biggest update to Android ever. And it brings more changes than any update has ever brought and improves on so many things that was lacking before. The operating system itself finally feels cohesive and coherent and it's really beautiful to look at. Material design brings the idea of layers, flat layers, think papers on your desk, piled on top of each other. There's a lot of swiping and swooshing and tons of animations are present and provides a pleasant user experience. It uses a lot of bright colors, almost pushing the boundaries of turning it into a cartoon, but finds a way to contain itself. It's like it's trying to defy the laws of physics, but it doesn't, and it just works and looks really, really good. Android has always been really good at notifications, if not the best. And we see other companies try to copy them, but they just can't. And the first thing you'll notice is the double menu system that Android had with KitKat is now gone. There's no more one finger swipe down access notifications or two finger swipe down access or quick settings. All you have to simply do is swipe down a little bit to see your notifications and then swipe down a little bit more to see the quick settings menu. It's so much easier than what was present in KitKat where you had to remember to use two fingers. If they weren't stretched far apart enough, sometimes the menu wouldn't appear. New animations have been added when you swipe down. It feels like you're opening and closing the blinds and when you continue to scroll down to access the quick settings menu, it's like watching a window close. At first, when you look at your battery, you don't see the actual percentage. What you have to do is, is pull down the quick settings menu and then all of a sudden it shows. Auto brightness is no longer there and Google now uses a thing called adaptive brightness, which allows you to adjust the light levels for your current lighting settings. An auto rotate option has been added and finally, Google has implemented a built-in flashlight. I mean, come on, Blackberry has one. The Chromecast button is present for your Nexus player Chromecast device and it makes it a lot easier to search for devices nearby. But that's not the only thing that's happened. Notifications have also gotten a lot smarter. Your phone now detects who is important and who is not and puts the important notifications at the top of the list. Say goodbye to putting your phone on silent with a dedicated silent button. Previously, you pushed the power button and selected the silent option. Lollipop introduces something called priority mode, which can be accessed using the volume button up or down. You can set it to none and have the phone silent all the time, or you can set it for X amount of time or indefinitely. It depends who you have on your priority list and only those people on it will be able to disturb you. You can still change it to vibrate by pressing the bell, but sometimes I simply just want to push the power button and put it on silent. Why do I need to jump through all these extra hoops? And finally with iOS, every time you receive a notification, a header card appears. And it's really annoying when you're in an app, but Android is changing that, which is making it totally different than the Apple. Now you'll see a header card, but it's only going to be the important notifications that you see. No longer will you be bombarded over and over again by excessive messaging and only the ones that matter will come in. And last and finally, the lock screen. The lock screen now has a centralized area to see all your notifications. Everything is there. If you swipe down, you'll get a full screen view of all of them. If you swipe up, it takes you into the phone. If you double tap any of them, you'll go directly into the app. And if you swipe left or right, it'll get rid of the actual notification pop-up. The phone camera button does the same thing. You swipe it to the left, it takes you directly into the camera button. You swipe the phone icon to the right, it takes you directly into the, the phone dialer. If you had a Nexus tablet, or any Android tablet rather, you know what multi-user support is. It's the ability to create profiles for different people using your device. It makes it really handy if you have kids, friends who just love touching your phone, or other people that just want to test out your phone. It has a guest mode so that they can log in as a guest. You can assign certain apps or they can customize their own experience. You can also make actual profiles for them. If you have kids, you can make them a specific profile and, don't, and not give them access to the Play Store. Or maybe just want them to access certain games and you can make that available as well. But this wouldn't be a review unless we're talking about Google Now. It's much improved. And it improves with every iteration of Android since KitKat, which is only one. But between now and then, Google's been making small improvements behind the scenes more cards to choose from um, and now checks your email and takes the important stuff and puts them in a card for you such as flights, restaurants, and you can even integrate it with OpenTable. But Google now even lets you access it no matter where you are in your phone. And if you have a Nexus 9 or a Nexus 6 device, you can even access when the screen is off. It makes it so convenient. With every Android update, we have a project. With Jelly Bean, we had Project Butter, which improved the performance of all Android devices. With Lollipop, we have Project Volta, and its goal is to make the phone's battery life last longer. All your batteries now tracked, and the data is sent back to Google to look for ways to improve the overall performance. For example, Google took a Nexus 5, put it in airplane mode, and turned the screen off. The device, which has la issues lasting a full day with regular use, lasted a whole month. 
Of course, the vice was sleeping, but it goes to show that Google's looking for ways to prioritize what's really needed to stay awake. And they do this with a new thing called the job scheduler. What the job scheduler does is basically take tasks that run in the background all the time and have them run all at once. Because if you have tasks that are consistently running in the background all the single time, it's going to continue to drain battery. But if you do it at one time, it'll help save battery over the long run. But that's not the only thing that was introduced. There's also a battery saver mode, which cuts the power of your, your sock and your background data to give your phone the extra time before dying. As soon as you turn it on, you're going to notice orange pylon bar looking things at the top and bottom of your phone. You have two options. You can either turn on at 5 or 15%. Of course, you're not going to get emails instantly, your messages are not going to come in as quick, and you're probably going to have to sync a lot of stuff manually. But if you're looking to squeeze that extra juice, it certainly helps. Android's cameras always fails in comparison to the competition. Most devices take decent photos, but none of them have ever been top of the line compared to Apple's iPhone. Most of the issues lies in the software itself, and Google is changing that by allowing raw pictures to be taken. If you don't know what raw photos are, they're usually two to three times the size of a JPEG. It also allows more control after the image has been imported into an editor. Exposure, white balance, and other settings are not lost, can be fiddled with. Unfortunately, you can't manually control the camera settings like you would with a dedicated camera, but it's a step in the right direction for improved photos. Also, HDR shots no longer take several seconds to snap. It can be taken instantly. In fact, Android's camera is not the only app that got massive improvements. All of their apps did. They all got redesigned to put them in line with material design. For example, Gmail, now shows you the ability to have more than one email account. You can have an Exchange account, you can have an IMAP account, and you can even have competitor accounts such as Outlook, Yahoo, and so on. It makes it a lot easier to have one specific app to handle all your email instead of having multiple ones. Gmail is no longer Gmail. It's an actual hub for other email accounts as well. But not all the apps were designed equally. For example, the calendar, which looks fantastic when you open up, lost a lot of functionality. No longer can you zoom in and out, which was a feature in KitKat, but no longer a feature in Lollipop. But it shows a bunch of pictures of holidays and events which just get into the way from seeing your actual calendar. It also doesn't run really well. It's kind of laggy when you scroll up and down. It still needs a lot of improvements. It's great that Google is updating each app one by one, but it seems like they rushed this one. Overall, all the changes are a change for the right direction. Most updates are small iterations to the, op to the operating system, but this one is a huge design overhaul. The phone I've used Android 5.0 on is the Nexus 5 like I mentioned before, and it honestly feels like a new device again. And the Nexus 5 happens to still be a very good deal for those of you looking for a new phone. As of now, Lollipop is the perfect stepping stone for future updates. It's beautiful, responsive, and overall, it shows that greater things are gonna be coming in the future. There's also a lot of good. Material design brings us a gorgeous new design that's pleasing to the eye. Animations make Android feel fast and fluid. Google Now is even more important than it ever was before, and it shows that voice recognition is really the future. Notifications are better than in every single way, and no one can really do what Android's doing with notifications yet. And the quick settings panel, which was once cumbersome, now feels a lot easier to use. But of course, with all the good, there's always a little bit of bad. But that's not to say that the stuff that's bad is actually really bad. Like for instance, the Google app consistency is not so consistent. Gmail looks great, but Calendar does it. Animations are nice, but will I get sick of them in the future? Sometimes I just want my app to load up and I don't need to see a little springy thing each time. There's no dedicated silent button, which kind of drives me crazy. Sometimes I just want to put my phone on silent. I don't have to jump through hoops to go to priority mode and go through all those things to get it done. And of course, there are a bunch of other things that I'm sure most of you might not find appropriate, but at the end of the day, these complaints are really small. Overall, material design is something that Google set up to make future updates even better. And it's finally feeling cohesive and coherent. And I can finally recommend an Android phone to even my parents, and they'll totally understand it. Thank you for watching this. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to embed this video or share the link with all your friends.